Coming at you full fledged, it's your boy Rage Man Rich with another video for y'all, man. Welcome, YouTube. How y'all doing today? Uh, feeling good. We coming at y'all with another video. First of all, coming straight in, hit that like button. Uh, comment throughout at the beginning, middle, or the end of the video. Um, share for others to see. If you come in and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified every time I drop. If there is a particular topic you want me to speak on, donate to that Rage Man. Donate to the Rage Man. Uh, I'm going to put that link to the cash app in a pinned comment below. Show some love if you want. Uh, and let's get right into it, man. So, after posting my, uh, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a minute. I just now got the time to do it. So, we're going to get to it uh, now. And after posting that out L train in big old video, as well as uh, listening to fellow LDBC, Lions Den basketball community member, too raw for sports' perspective on a certain player, I now have to add a little bit of cont continuity to my all-time rankings. So, to my own all-time rankings. Now, with Oscar Robinson now entering my top 10 all-time player list, we have to compare him to the point guard I had ahead of him for the longest time. And now, considering, now knowing what I know now, I, I think there's a disparity between the two, and I got to put Oscar Robertson over him. And this point guard is superstar point guard of the uh, Detroit Pistons, Isaiah Lord Thomas the third, the babyface assassin, Zeke, or as they call him, as he's also known as, you feel me? And... Uh, First, before we get into the comparison, let me just say my top 10 uh, all-time player criteria. Obviously, it has to be a, a, a mixture, a fully contextualized mixture of individual stats, team stats, individual accolades and stats, team success, um, your peak uh your your fall per se um how you handle adversity how you want how you want and all those things but the uh the thing the differentiation between these two players is uh well it 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 well you can say this you can say Isaiah Thomas is a top ten player but but uh I think he's falling short, man. I think he's falling short. Uh, the main commonality between every top 10 player is that they can say they are arguably, they can say they have a legitimate case at being the greatest player at that particular position. So with all that, all the stats, accolades, team success, how you want, adversity, all that, this is the, this is the thing that I'm looking at. Can you say you are the, can you say you are the, confidently that you are the greatest point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, or center of all time? Can you say that? And with all the accolades and accomplishments and all those things that Zeke has, I still think he comes up a bit short. <laughs> a bit short, you know. A bit short to the big O. You know, big O, he was one of the first big uh, point guards at 6'5. Uh, some say that Isaiah Thomas is like 6'1, six, 6 feet, maybe 5'11. But yeah, he comes up a bit short. And uh, figurative, figuratively, uh, figuratively, and literally, uh, he come up a bit short. But uh, what we're going to do in this video is just continue. I'm going with my comparison style uh, like I did in the Stop the Conflation, confl conflation three-part video videos. And we're going to 
compare the two's multiple aspects of the two's careers and see who really came out on top. So first we're gonna go with the rookie season, obviously. Uh as uh Robertson's rookie season was in the nineteen sixty seven, nineteen sixty eight season. Thomas's rookie year was in the nineteen eighty one, nineteen eighty two season. Uh, I was playing for the Detroit Pistons and Robertson for the Cincinnati Royals, now now known as the Sacramento Kings. Um, Robertson by far, Robertson by far had the better uh rookie year. I don't think that's that uh, that doesn't. I don't even think that needs to be said. Uh. If y'all watched the lab, my uh that out big out L train in big O video, y'all know Oscar Robinson averaged thirty and a half points, nine point seven assists, which was leading the league in assists at that time. His rookie year and averaging ten point one rebounds. So coming in, he almost averaged uh a thirty point triple double off forty seven percent. And looking back at that time, the uh the uh the league average for field goal percentage and considering he was a point guard this a big man league this is back with Bill Russell Wilt Chamberlain playing dude was dominating that's crazy as compared to Thomas's which he 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 had a good rookie year but it was no big old rookie year he averaged seventeen points seven point eight Assists, 2.9 rebounds off 42% from the field and 20, almost 29% from the three-point line, which was pretty good at that time considering that the year he was drafted, that was just a season removed from the NBA implementing the three-point shot. Uh, that's pretty good. And he also averaged, I think, oh... Uh, Damn, 2.1 steals coming in. 2.1 steals coming into the league. Now, when Robertson was playing, they wasn't recording steals and blocks. So, that's probably two things he got over him in, in his rookie year. It's three-point shooting and steals, which weren't a thing. Or at least weren't recorded. Because um, people were shooting from distance at that time that he has over Robertson. But ultimately, Oscar Robertson got the rookie of the year. Isaiah Thomas did not get the rookie of the year his year. I don't even know who did his the 1982. Who got the championship in the 1982 season? Uh, I mean, not the championship, the rookie of the year. Let's check real quick because I don't know this. Uh, let's go back. NBA. The rookie of the year in the nineteen oh Buck Williams. Buck Williams. I think he he played for the uh I don't know who he played for. Let's go. Just digress real quick. Cause I did not know this. Buck Williams was the uh he was a power forward for the at the time six eight power forward for the New Jersey Nets. Oh, okay. He averaged his rookie year, he averaged um, uh, 15 and a half points, 12.3 rebounds, and 1.3 assists. So that's who he lost to. There was no question. Again, Robertson had the better rookie season than uh, them, but Isaiah Thomas actually led his team to more wins. His team, the Detroit Pistons, their season was 39 and 43, so they were almost a 500 team. Uh, the Cincinnati Royals were 33 and 46. So, while Isaiah Thomas can say, oh, I was probably maybe a better defender, considering, at least on paper, considering that he averaged 22.1 steals, and, uh, he was way more capable outside shooter, considering, on paper, at least, uh, considering that they were recording three point shots past, uh, started in 1980. Uh, so yeah, I give the check 
to Robertson on that. Now, let's compare peaks. Now, both players have something, a rare accomplishment for a lot of NBA players coming straight into the league. Both players were all-stars their uh, rookie season, which uh, I don't have a stat for, but th I know that's a rare stat. Not too many people are all-stars their rookie season. I know um, I know Yao Ming was. I know Yao Ming was. I think Michael Jordan was. I mean, he averaged 28 coming into the league. Wilt Chamberlain, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he was. He averaged uh 36 37 points coming to the league so this is uh this is a real list all stars coming straight into the league so uh the two seasons we're gonna pick for each player we're gonna pick two seasons and compare them one consider a piece we're gonna pick their best individual season and we're gonna pick their best team season and the season for individual success i'm gonna pick for robinson it's gonna be the 60 Seven sixty eight season, and for Isaiah Thomas, it's going to be the 84-85 season. Now, in the 67-68 season, this is one of the, uh, I think this was the, I think this was the, I don't know what championship it was for the Boston Celtics, but it was one of the 11, one of the 11 championships in the Bill Russell run. Uh, and Oscar Robertson at this this year averaged twenty nine point two points a game, which was leading the league in points. Again, for the fifth time, leading the league in assists with nine point seven assists, and probably one of his lower years in rebounds with six rebounds a game, and he led the league in. Free throw percentage with 87% from the free throw line. Off 50% from the field. That's hella good. That, this is his best season. And something I'm noticing about this season, which is crazy. I didn't even notice this. You know how they say Nate Tiny Archibald was the first player to lead the league. The only player to lead the league in points and assists the same year. In 1972-1973. That's not true. It's it's Oscar Robertson. I'm looking at it right now. He led the league in points and assists that year, which is crazy. That's crazy. They don't even consider that. I wonder why not, because officially they got uh, Nate Tiny Archibald as the record holder for that. I wonder why that is. But that's another part. This is his this is best season. I don't. I'm, and he's not even averaging the triple-double this season. Out of all the years, he averaged 30-point triple-doubles. This is probably his best season. Uh, this is probably second. Of, this is his th um his third. He's shooting his third highest percentage from the, uh, from the field. His highest percentage from the free throw line. And leading the league in points and assists. Like, a averaging almost 30 points and 10 rebounds. I mean, 10 assists. So that's his best. That's his best right there. Now Isaiah Thomas, on the other hand, in the nineteen eight oh, now let's. Well, no, that's another aspect I'm gonna address later in the video. But uh, sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, uh, uh nineteen eighty four, nineteen eighty five season for Isaiah Thomas. He averaged. 21.2 points a career a career high and league high at the time leading the league in assists 13.9 assists 13.9 assists a career high in rebounds too four and a half four and a half rebounds uh wow wait oh, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing i'm sorry uh, from 45% from, from the field and 25% from the three-point line with 2.3 steals. That That's not bad. That's not bad at all for a point guard, for almost a six-foot six foot point guard in a, in a league full of trees with 
Kareem and Moses Malone and Hakeem Olajuwon and who else in the 1985? Ralph Sampson, those guys. He averaging 21 and 14? Like, that, that, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, I don't know no point guard in the league right now, not even Chris Paul. Not even Chris Paul right now who <clears throat> still playing in the MVP caliber level. His team probably, Phoenix Suns probably going to make the finals this year. Not even Chris Paul. Nobody in the league right now is averaging over 12 assists a game. Hard to do even 10. LeBron just did it. His first, LeBron James. The great passer, we consider him to be, just led the league in assists for the first time his whole career a couple years ago. And he barely had 10. He barely had 10. So that's just how astonishing that stat is. But uh, I'm going to go with... You know, he put up career highs and assists and career high in rebounds. But I'm still going to go with individual season. Individual season, I'm going to go with Oscar Robertson, man. All the all the historical significance, the historical for significance for what he did that year and just the the statistical output. You know, He's averaging almost double digit in assists with 9.7 assists. This is leading the league in assists for his fifth time. Now, Isaiah Thomas was leading the league in assists uh his best season also, but that was the only time he led in the league in assists, which is crazy for how good of a point how great of a point guard he is. This is Oscar Robertson again, his fifth time. And Leading the league as a point guard. Leading the league in points with 29.2 points. I have to give that to Oscar Robinson. Oscar Robinson has to have the better individual season. So, when you talk about better individual seat, when you talk about peak individual season output, I got to, I'm, I'm taking, if I'm picking a team, I got to go with Oscar Robinson. 6'5 point guard. Can average 30 points and get me 10, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. I mean, give me six rebounds, 10 assists. You know, lead the league in assists and points, which is an unofficial record because they have somebody who did it uh, five years, five, six years later as the record holder. We, we I got to give him that. Now, when it comes to team success, this is where it gets kind of now this one this one this one is close this one is closer than than the individual when it comes to team team success peak when it comes when it comes to peak team success i selected for oscar robertson obvious the 1970 1971 bucks they went 66 and 16. Uh, just to go through who they beat in the playoffs, they beat uh, in the first round, they beat the I don't know where they were at the time. I they beat the Warriors, they beat the Warriors with uh, top 75 players, Nate Thurman, who's a probably like a top 15 at the uh, at the uh, at the highest, uh, top 20 center at the lowest, Nate Thurman and Jerry Lucas front court. That's a top 15, uh, that's a top 15 power forward, top 75 player. That's a, one of the greatest front courts. They beat them in, in a gentleman's sweep 4 one in the first round. Then, they beat, uh, they beat, then they beat the super team. Then, they, I'm looking at this right now. This is a hell of a run. They beat a juggernaut, defensive, offensive juggernaut, front court, and Nate Thurman in the computer, Joey Lucas. Then, they beat the super team of its time, even if they were a little older, but this was still a super team 
Los Angeles Lakers with Will Chamberlain, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Gail Goodrich. They had a fucking super team. They beat them in five games. They beat them in five games. Now, to give the Buster credit, because this is they did go 66-16. This is this is a super team too, when you look at it, but not the super team. In, not the second definition of the super team. If you go back to my it's levels to it all definition of super team. We're talking about the first one when it's just it's just talent top to bottom on this team, basically, in short words. Uh you had Oscar Robertson, uh uh John McLaughlin, Bob Dandridge, the Kawhi Leonard of his day, Greg Smith, uh Obviously, Lou Alcindor, now known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This is a squad. So, you got two Titans in the conference finals going against each other. And they beat them in five games. Then, they go to the finals. Face, if this team was on 2K, if this team was on 2K, well... Just looking at their roster too, this is kind of a dude. And a lot of people talk about how these, how, the, how oh, it was only eight teams back then when they were playing. Like man, that mean talent was more spread. Talent was, it was more parity. The nineteen seventies was the most, the the biggest had the most parity of any era, any decade in basketball history. It was only two teams that won. Uh, a championship more than once and it wasn't and neither of them were repeat championships so i don't know how many teams i would have to count it was, it, it was definitely over three or four teams that won a championship that decade so when people say it wasn't no talent in the league that's just a fallacy like i'm looking at this this finals team that they faced they faced uh they swept they faced and swept uh the Washington Bullets at the time, uh, or Baltimore Bullets at the time, with a, a a legit big three. This is a legit big three. With Wes Unsell, who's a top top fifteen, top twenty center, Earl Monroe, Earl the Pearl Monroe, who is a when you think about it, he's a top twenty shooting guard, and Gus Johnson. And Gus Johnson, that's a legit big three. They swept them. They went 4-1, 4-1, 4-0 because they didn't have a uh they didn't have a second round at that time. So they went 12 and 2 to to win their NBA championship. So that's the 1971 Milwaukee Bucks. For Isaiah Thomas, I have the 1970, I mean, 1988-1989 Detroit Pistons, their first championship. Uh, they went 63-19 and in the regular season. And this is something people love talking about. This is something Carcino for life love talking about. <laughs> this run they went on, man. My shout out to Carcino for life, man. Uh, this is something he loved talking about this playoff run, which is which is great. We got to give them credit, which is great. I'm giving them credit now. Uh, they swept. They swept the Larry Bird led Celtics with Kevin McHale and Robert Paris, Dennis Johnson. They swept them three to zero. Now some can say. They were a little old at that time, a little hurt, but they still swept them. This is a dynastic team. They swept them. And the second round, we have a second round at this time. They sweep probably the best, probably the best team of the era to not win a championship or make the finals. The Milwaukee Bucks. The 1980s Milwaukee Bucks is probably the greatest team to never make the finals or of its era to never make the finals let alone a championship they swept them Sidney Moncrief 
Sidney Moncrief, one of the greatest shooting guards of all time. They swept them. Then, conference finals. We already know the story rivalry between Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls and Isaiah Thomas and the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys against, I guess, the the uh, the favorites, the heels versus the baby faces. What other way can I say it, you know? Uh, the year prior to this, Michael Jordan is an MVP. This is MVP caliber Michael Jordan. But they were just, they weren't ready just yet. They weren't ready just yet, and the Pistons beat them in six games. They weren't ready just yet. They still had the Bulls' number. And in the finals, in the finals, not too many. And I, uh, this is what people, and I'm going to give Isaiah Thomas his credit, man. Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, top five greatest point guards of all time. Not too many people can say that they beat all these people in the same run. In the NBA Finals, the 1988 NBA Finals, 1989 NBA Finals, the bad boy Pistons sweep the Showtime Lakers with Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Byron Scott, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, A.C. Green, um, what's his name? Uh, ah, what's his name? Kurt Rambis. Like, super team. Super team. That's a super team in this, in this day. Super team. You feel me? That's a legendary run. That's a legendary run. Now, y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about this comp. The team comp. Because... Both of these teams are top 10 teams. I'm not even going to count. The 19, look, the 1971 Milwaukee Bucks and the 1989 Detroit Pistons are top 10 teams. But to add a little more context to it, let's add a little more spiciness to this, man. Uh, the prior year, 1980, 1988 NBA Finals, or yeah, NBA Finals, they could the Detroit Pistons could have won their first championship then. Outside of that, you know, infamous foul call on Kareem Abdul Jabbar by uh Bill Lambeer, I believe it was, that gave the Lakers their lead and Kareem's uh sixth championship and uh Magic Johnson Magic Johnson's fifth and last championship. Um uh, yeah, Isaiah Thomas's 40 plus point game on a sprained ankle, an inspiring effort. They could have went, they could have been the first team to three peat since the Bill Russell Celtics. Just to add a little bit more. So this season right here, this was a this run, this playoff run that the Pistons went on, this was a I'm not done. Uh unfinished business type of season. Kind of like the Chris Paul. Kind of like the Chris Paul. Phoenix Suns right now, who Chris Paul, who just entered the top ten point guard list in my opinion this uh this past postseason run, it's kind of similar to that, and similarly similarly to that, which is kind of crazy, I have the Milwaukee Bucks facing the uh Phoenix Suns again in this NBA Finals this year, but I digress. And again, they win, they go back to back in the following year, nineteen ninety, beating the. Portland Trailblazers in uh, five games. Now, let me know. Let me know. Uh, me personally, I got to go with on this, on teams. Uh, teams, man. Uh, I'm going to have to go mm, for this. This one kind of hard, man. What do you think about it, man? This one kind of hard. When you compare the teams, ah, oh, that was hard because soon as Oscar Robinson got Kareem, they wanted to chip. It took them a little minute. It was more of a slow burn for that Pistons team, man. But they went back to back, and they could have won three. But I just told y'all, the 70s 
had a hell of parity. Oh, when you consider the run and a record, I got to when you consider they when you consider they playoff record and a regular season record. Ah, and just the talent they got, just with Oscar Robertson and Kareem on the same team, those are two top 10. Those are two top 10 players. That's a top a lot of people sleep on this. This is a top five duo, arguably. You got Michael and Pippen, Magic, Kareem. Right after Magic, Kareem, Shaq and Kobe. Probably Bron and D-Wade. After Bron and D-Wade, I'm putting Oscar Robertson and Kareem. This is a top 10 duo. I got to go with the Bucks, man. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I got to go with the Bucks. Yeah. I think on oh, both peaks, both individually as a team and as a team, I think I think Robertson peaked higher, man. Robertson definitely peaked a little higher. Now, let's go to stats. Let's compare stats. Now, uh Oscar Robertson Oscar Robertson in his career played 1,040 games. And in that 1,040 games, he averaged 25.7 points, 7.5 rebounds, and 9.5 assists off of 48.5% from the field and uh, 83% from the free throw line. For Isaiah Thomas... Isaiah Thomas in his career played almost almost 70-ish less, less games than almost a season. Less games than uh, Oscar Robertson with 979. In his career, he averaged 19.2 points, uh, 3.6 assists, and 9.3.6 uh, rebounds, I'm sorry. At 9.3 assists off of 45% from the field, 29% from three, and 75% from the free throw line. So, that's no question. Uh, again, to reference uh, that old video, Oscar Robinson averaged 30 point, at least 30 points six times. Uh, he led the league in points at that time. At that time... With that percentage, uh, as a point guard, there's no question Oscar Robertson is the better scorer. Uh, rebounding, again, that goes to Oscar Robertson, multiple seasons, averaging uh, double-digit uh, double digit rebounds, a triple-double again. Uh, Mr. Triple-Double, the original Mr. Triple-Double. Uh at his highest, averaging 12 and a half, 12 and a half rebounds as compared to uh, Isaiah Thomas, whose career high, again, was in that 1985 season where he averaged four and a half rebounds. So he has an eight, a eight rebound difference in uh, output when it comes to peak output rebounding. And it's almost close. It's almost close. Uh, when it comes to assist average over their careers, uh, it's 9.3 for Robertson and 9.5 for Robertson and 9.3 for Thomas. But when we go, when we dig a little deeper, when we dig a little deeper, it's really not close because, again, Isaiah Thomas only has one assist championship, and Oscar Robertson has six now. Who is Isaiah Thomas losing to, you ask? He was losing to John Stockton, who I believe led the league in assists uh, nine straight seasons. And John Stockton, fifth greatest uh, point guard of all time. Y'all yeah, see in the thumbnail right here, all-time leaders is the uh, title of this video. Uh, yeah, so that's who he was losing to, not to uh, – not to – discredit who he was losing to. I just had to say who he was losing to. I had to give credit to the person he was losing to. Uh, 
And at this time, another thing to make this even more impressive, at this time, assists in Oscar Robertson's era, they were more, they were more, you know, strict with how they were attributing assists to players. Like, you had to get an immediate shot after a pass. So, imagine how, how like, free-flowing the game is now and kind of lenient they are on the rules because they are hella lenient on, on the rules today. Imagine how many assists. Imagine how many assists both of these players were average. But considering how hard it was for at that time to get assists and Oscar Robertson's, he's averaging nine and a half rebound, nine and a half assists for a career. Imagine how many assists he would have averaged the season today. And to uh, fast forward, he's a bit, he's a more efficient scorer from the uh, field by. From the field by three percent, and from the free throw line by almost eight percent. So he's a way more efficient shooter, a uh, way more efficient scorer than a uh, shoot, way more efficient scorer and shooter of the basketball than Isaiah Thomas. Now to the people who still disagree and want to use advanced metrics. If you want to use advanced metrics, that's completely fine. But to uh, your response, I would say Oscar Robertson has a higher PER uh, by five by five points uh, with 23.2 PER to uh, Isaiah Thomas's 18.1. And when you want to consider win shares, it's stupid. Stupid bigger than it's stupid bigger than uh Isaiah Thomas's, which is 80.7, and Oscar Robertson's win shares is 189.2. So that's almost almost over an 100 point difference, and uh, that is over an 100 point difference. In, uh, impact on winning for your team. Now, we just did the peak rookie, peak, and stats and accolades. Now, let's go to cons and falls. Cons and falls. Uh, now, going over, that's a, I'm glad thing that was the last thing I went over in stats because uh, you see the difference in impact on winning, that's a big difference because we know that Isaiah Thomas is one of the only seven point guards to win finals MVP. He has a uh, finals record for most steals in a uh, most steals in a final series with 66 and the highest um, percentage from the three. I think he was 16 from 20 in 1990 against the Trailblazers. But look at his impact on winning compared to Oscar Robertson's. One could say, one should say, when comparing these two players, that Zeke had way more help than Oscar Robertson. And that's a fact. That's a that's a pure fact. Now, I'm going to list some of the players. I'm going to list some players Isaiah has had on his teams compared to some of the players, some of the great players Oscar Robertson has had on his teams. Now, we got a top 75 player, an unofficial top 75 player who should be replacing a top 75 player, the original AD, who should be replacing Anthony Davis on the top 75 list, Adrian Dantley, great scorer. I think he was a two-time, uh, I think he was a two-time uh, scoring champion. Uh, he got kind of got screwed out of uh, winning a championship with the Pistons due to Isaiah Thomas finagling him out of the uh, Pistons 
via a trade for Mark Aguirre from the Dallas Mavericks, he should have, he should be a two-time champion. If he was a two-time champion, plus the career he already had, he would be a top 75 player. Again, he is a top 75 player. He's the real AD. Uh, and Anthony Davis should not be in the top 75. <laughs> but that's one. Adrian Dantley, the microwave, Vinny Johnson, finals MVP in their first championship, Joe Dumars, the Jordan stopper, Joe Dumars, Rick Mahorn, Bill Beer, Dennis Rodman, John Sally. Listen to all these names. Oh, and Joe Dumars again. Joe Dumars is also a top 75 player. He should be replacing either Anthony Davis, Carmelo, or Damian Lillard. Joe Dumars is a top 75 player. Dennis Rodman, top 75 player, officially. That's all the help Isaiah Thomas has had. Do you want to know the players? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. Uh, is Rick Mahorn a Hall of Famer? I don't know. But that's a lot of help. That's a lot of great talent. Now, on the two teams he played for, the one top 75 player he had on the uh, Kings was Jerry Lucas. He played with Jerry Lucas. And I think they won, I think they won close to 60 games in one of those years with the Royals. And they even took the Celtics five or six games one of those seasons. I don't know which season it was, but they, they had a pretty good year. But outside of that year, Isaiah... I mean, Robertson really had bad teams on those Cincinnati Royals. That's another. This is a. This is again. I, uh, Oscar Robertson is the unbastardized version. He is the prototype to a LeBron James. So he really didn't have help while Bron underachieved with the help that he did have a top uh, defense and a top offensive team. And that's just the one top 75 player that he has on the Royals. On the Bucks, he had, now we already said he had McLaughlin, Abdul-Jabbar, and uh, Bob Dandridge. That's four players, and one of them, three of them is on a team almost 12 years separated from his rookie season. And being on the Royals. Like, it's crazy, right? And look at the difference. That's over 100 points. That just goes to show how valuable he was to his team. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. We got we to gotta consider this. Isaiah Thomas had more help. Oscar Robertson did more with less. But we're going to get to it. Let's go a little further, man. Throughout all Isaiah Thomas's winning years, Zeke was never a top. He was never in the top 10 of MVP votes. Ain't that crazy? Two-time NBA champion, 12-time All-Star, finals MVP. Five-time All-NBA, never top 10 in MVP. Oscar Robertson won the league MVP in an era where only Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain were winning that award. This is the big man era, point guard, league MVP. People sleep on that. That year, he was looked at as the best player. Go look up that. Go look up. It, 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 you, you can go find this right now. 
go look up that meme where they look where they uh where they was where they uh showed the uh the MVP race in that season. I think Elgin Baylor was averaging damn near thirty six points a game. That was the uh that was the season. Uh, Will averaged fifty and twenty five, and Bill Russell averaged like fourteen points or like twenty three rebounds or something, like crazy. That that's one of the greatest MVP races. That's who his competition was, facing them not just four times, like y'all say it's eight teams. He had to face them like six times a season, averaging triple doubles. Like, come on, bro. Like, like that's a that's another thing. That's another thing. Isaiah Thomas was never top ten in MVP votes. You can't be top ten. You ain't that, and you never won league MVP for one. Let alone not even been top ten in MVP votes. You can't be top ten. I'm sorry. Uh, another comparison. The Detroit Pistons with Chuck Daly, they can be looked at as like a real ensemble, a real put together cast of players. That's what I look at the Detroit Pistons as. They are top that eighty eight, I mean that eighty nine team, top ten team of all time, uh, revolutionary. That team would dominate today. That team would dominate today. That team is meant for today. <laughs> like they running with a three guard lineup, it's meant for today. But I look at that. I look at that championship squad as more of a straight ensemble, as com- rather as opposed to the that seventy bucks team, because while they were great and a super team for their time, they had a lot of talent too. That bucks, they that bucks those those bucks that championship bucks team was spearheaded by again. The two, arguably, the two greatest of all time at those positions. That's who it was spearheaded by, and that was a that was a that was a first time thing. The first time they teamed up, the first year they teamed up, they won the chip. Not the first team. Not it was actually wait, but yeah, the first season. The first season. The first season. That's why I look at it differently. Like I said, it was more of a slow burn with the Pistons as compared to the Bucks. So, you see what Oscar Robinson did with no help. And you see the win percent, the win shares he has with no help. Look what he does when he does have help. He's going to dominate the league in the regular season. Now he averaged that season. He averaged uh nineteen and a half points, eight point two assists, and five point seven rebounds off forty nine percent from the field to eighty five percent from the free throw line. His numbers were down, but he sacrificed and they dominated and won. I'm gonna say that Bucks team is greater than that Pistons team too. I'm gonna say that Bucks team gotta be gotta be top seven of gotta be. Top seven to five for real. They gotta be top five at the highest, top seven at the lowest, greatest teams of all time. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. Look what he did when he first got the help. That win, that was that win share thing. Just did it for me. I would let me know. Let me know. We going. I got a little more. I got a little more. I know this finna go on an hour, but we we gotta get into it, man. I'm enjoying this conversation that we having, man. I mean, I'm saying we, but that I'm having with myself, but with y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. Another thing. Another thing. No, I'm going to say Oscar Robertson is a little better. I mean, not a little bit quite better than Isaiah Thomas is, he's more durable. The big O was more durable. So, when you when you look at their minutes, career average in minutes, uh, Oscar Robinson averaged 42.2 minutes a game. It's 48 minutes in an NBA game. He averaged 42.2 for a career. 
Isaiah Thomas for a career average 36 point three point three minutes a game that's six minutes six so if they play right now on teams win shares consider win shares consider that Oscar Robertson is going to play six more minutes than Isaiah Thomas who's going to win that game think about it and Oscar Robertson's First nine seasons in the in the league. His first nine seasons, sixty to sixty nine. His first run on the Cincinnati uh, Royals. He averaged forty eight point eight. I did the math on this. Forty eight point eight minutes per game. That's every minute of every game and some more in a little overtime. His first run on the Royals, he played every minute of every game. His highest average in minutes in a season was the 1964-1965 season where he averaged 45.6 minutes a game. You want to know Isaiah Thomas' peak in minutes per game? Uh, it was 38.2 in 1982. That was his second season. You feel me? Now, Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas does have this over him. Uh, he, he has one. He has played a full season, 82 games in his third season. Uh, Oscar Robertson never played a full 82 games. He played 80 in his third season, but the lowest he played was 64, and that was like he was close to retirement. So he's more durable. He's more durable. Isaiah Thomas, uh, Isaiah Thomas, you know, he, he's a short guy. He's a little compared to Oscar Robertson, so that's understandable that he's a little more durable. But I have to, I have to bring the facts into this and to show y'all that it's levels. It's really levels to this. It's really levels, and I, I know they respect each other. I'm pretty sure Isaiah Thomas himself would say, Oscar Robertson, outside of Magic, Oscar Robertson. That's probably the only point guard here say that's better than him. Um, now. Let's go to career endings. We're we're fixing to wrap this up. I want to see if I'm gonna hit this hour mark, but we're fixing to wrap it up. Now, career endings. In uh, at 35 years old, in his last season, 1973-1974 season, um, Oscar Robinson averaged 12.7 points a game. 6.4 6 assists per game and four rebounds a game, shooting 43% from the field and 83% from the line. Now, this Milwaukee Bucks team would go 59-23, and 23, and they would eventually lose in the NBA Finals to the John Havlicek and, uh, and, uh, damn, I was just thinking about him. Uh, Dave Cowens, Dave Cowens, Dave Cowens, uh, and Tommy Heinsohn coached the Boston Celtics team. They would lose to them in seven games. And that's how he retired. He retired averaging almost 13 points, six, six and a half uh, assists and four boards, 59 games, and... 23 losses, losing in the finals. This is how Oscar Robinson retires. Isaiah Thomas retires at 32 years old, averaging 14.8 points a game, 6.9 assists, and 2.7 rebounds, shooting 41% from the field and 70 percent from the free throw line and that Pistons team won 
20 games. 20 and 62. So, when you compare career endings, I mean, look at it. You could say Isaiah Thomas got a little more points, but I'm pretty sure he was taking more shots too. Matter of fact, let's make let, let, let's confirm this. I'm on basketball reference. How many shots did he take a game? He took eleven shots per game. No, 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 no. This no, this is Oscar Robson. In his last season, he took eleven shots a game. And Isaiah Thomas's last season. He took 13.2 shots a game. So considering he took more shots, I would assume that he would make more points, average more points, right? So while I give that to the scoring part to Isaiah Thomas in his last season, I think, again, Oscar Robertson was the better scorer. 6.9 to 6.4, I give Isaiah Thomas that. Four to two point seven, I give that to uh, uh, the big O. Uh, now, uh, would it possibly, with the possibility of it winning the nineteen eighty eight, with the possibility of Isaiah Thomas winning the nineteen eighty eight and finals. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Blah, blah, blah. With the possibility of Isaiah Thomas winning the championship in 1988, plus being favorites, because they was, Carcino for life. Carcino. I hope you watch this, bro. Uh, and being the favorites to 3 P in 1991, it can be said that the rosters he had, the rosters that helped that Isaiah had, he left some chips on the table, man. That could be said, bro. That could be said. What's up with a what's up with a deep playoff run in 1991? They lost to the Bulls, huh? They were the favorites. What happened? What happened in 1988? We can say that foul, but we can't say that foul was the only reason they lost. Like. Something could have happened. Something transcendent could have happened. We've seen Isaiah Thomas transcend before. Why it can't happen again? With the help he had. So, winning, going back to back, winning the finals MVP, winning as many games, the records they put up at that time, being as historically uh, important they are, historically significant, because, again, this team would dominate today. I give him credit, but it could be said he could have did more. He could have went... He could have won. He could have three-peated and went to another finals at least. So, Robertson, on the other hand, he retired after losing in the championship round, being the starting point guard of a team that won 59 games. Like, what can I say, man? What can I say about that? I just went through their whole careers, bro. It's going to take that long. Now, y'all got to watch this whole video, man. Y'all got to watch this whole video to get the full context. I just went through their whole career, bro. I went from the rookie season to the individual peak season to the individual team season to their stats and accolades to the context of their stats and accolades to the help they had to the uh, adversity they had to overcome to the competition they was facing you feel me to the very end to that walk off the court bro you gotta consider that you feel me so y'all got some questions Y'all got anything y'all want me to know? Y'all got some questions for me, man? Like, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? Do y'all agree that Oscar Robertson is quite better than Isaiah Thomas? And 
I was wrong all along. The Isaiah Thomas was the second greatest of all time. I have him third behind Oscar Robertson. He's still better than Steph Curry. So anybody that thinks Steph Curry is better than Isaiah Thomas, that's cap. So you can stop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, my top five point guards right now is John Stockton, Steph Curry, Isaiah Lord Thomas III, Oscar Robertson, and Magic Johnson. Uh, my top 15 video i don't think i don't know if i'm coming out with a top 15 video yet but at minimum i'm going to make an instagram post about that and that's coming later today so again man i'm coming with y'all with the flames i'm gonna drop some more v uh videos this weekend like this uh like this video exiting comment what you think share for others to see man i want others to see what the real history is in the game, you know what I'm saying? The real history, real context. The real context. All that. If you ain't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so you get notified every time I drop. And...